I can imagine that you all have been very waiting very patiently with lots of questions. So I think maybe we should just like go right into some questions. I have a question. This is a technical question. It's been driving me nuts. <laughs> um, I would like to know how you mix squash with egg yolk. Oh. Very yeah. short. I mean, not how a whole lot of detail. But how much do you oh, need? Oh. Yeah. Okay, it's you fairly egg simple. Egg? Yeah. I don't know if you ever cooked and had to take a yeah. separate egg yolk. Well, yeah. you start with that. You throw it in a glass. I generally use two egg yolks because after a while, your yolks will contaminate with colors you know, that uh -huh. you're mixing with as uh -huh. you pull it out. Um, do you, do you, what, what uh, medium do you use? I use gouache all the time and I use it on watercolor paper. Uh huh. So instead of water, you're using egg yolk. So you'd like dip your brush As a medium. In Got it. You just beat it up and then. You, you just pull it in, you mix, it, mix the color. Thank and it's you, the it's medium. been driving me nuts. <laughs> and it's, it's very fluid and yes. And it's oil compatible after it dries. Isn't that the same as casein? It's very similar, yes. Mm -hmm. Tempra. Casein is, is what you actually think. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know quite how to articulate this, and I'm kind of a shy person, but I'm kind of go just going to go for it. <laughs> when all of you talk, what I, what I wonder about as an artist is what keeps you going on a daily basis? How do you reaffirm yourselves as artists, given the judgments that the world has of you, the critiques that people have of you, maybe the judgments that you have of yourselves. How do you keep that fire alive in yourselves as artists? I quit every day. <laughs> 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 well, sometimes it's hard. You know, you get something from your art, from the making, right? You get something from that. But uh, in my case, anyway, um, it's been like a sine wave of, uh, you know, being up on top, it's great, and being down on the bottom, why am I doing this? I'm going to. Is it worth it? I mean, that, those hard times where, why keep going? And in my case, uh, always something happens. Somebody, I get some glowing sort of response from some one person or somebody writes me a check or something. So it's just, it's just, it's just I mean, in a way you could say the, uh, something has supported me. So there's a question like, how much do you need? And that's a question you can't, you can't answer until you've found out, you know. Um, let me answer that real quickly and then, uh, for me, um, you know, the, the studio practice is sort of ebb and flows a little bit, with, with the teaching, especially um, teaching a lot. And I think, you know, what's the alternative? Not doing it, and to me that isn't even part of the form, you know, it's not gonna happen, <laughs> really. Um, and like you said, it's, it's you, you get a sense of uh, recognition, and it's not so much, you know, being written about, or but someone could say something about a painting, and, and that feeds, feeds the soul in a certain way, or a check arrives in the mail, <laughs> that, uh, you know, I'll, something I'll like see that. It. Also, uh, Ideas keep coming exactly, and yeah. crowding your head and mm -hmm. you have to get them out there. Mm -hmm. So it's not about always, I mean, money is always good, but it's, not, it's really more about making the work that keeps me going. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Mildred, this is Hannah and I have a question for you and I would also like the other members to um, fill in the, the gap. So uh, here is the question to you. Uh, you had experienced some uh, rejection in a way uh, when uh, being accepted to certain places and it seems like this really fueled your creativity and really to prove that I can be like everybody else. So my question is, let's say if you didn't have these obstacles, should you, would you still be doing what you have been able to accomplish? And I want to address it to the other panels and saying how much of the rejection or 
the, the challenges um, contribute to creativity and the amazing work, the accomplishment that you have been able to establish? I, I think it's because growing up, I was part of this invisible world, and that, that gave me sort of the, the, the impetus or the interested in the drive to really um, bring voice to those who didn't have one. And I basically, since I grew up in Berkeley, I have this edge that uh, a, a lot of other people don't have. When they say you can't do something, then you know you can. And, uh, and my family background, um, I think that my parents really helped to instill that in, in, in all of us. I mean, just because someone, I mean, who is someone to tell you what you can't do with your life? I mean, it's my life, and each one of us have a different road and path to take. And even though it may be difficult, it doesn't matter. I mean, it really does. The bottom line is, this is my life. And I can take it the way I want it and do what I want, basically. So I just, I just didn't let that be, even though there were obstacles, but not really. Find another way. It's, it's, it's really pretty straightforward. Yeah, I agree with that. <clears throat> I mean, I think one thing that maybe is part of an artistic temperament is the uh, ability to say to yourself, well, all right, how, how can I figure this out? You know, I mean, you don't have to take these things that are said to you by someone else as somehow the only version of reality. I mean, in a way, it seems to me that the artist is the person that wants to live his or her own real life and that seeks hopes to find that. And that means I have to, uh, it means I can also make my decision about what's worthwhile and what isn't, not listen to what someone else says. And, uh, and also, though, there's this other aspect, which is, um, and I don't know how you, you have courage, but you, you have to have a little bit of courage. Uh, to trust that voice in yourself where no one, no one has said, maybe someone says, hey, we're, we're painting abstraction and, uh, you know, figuration is dead, baby, you know? <laughs> you know that kind of thing? Well, I want to paint figures, you know? <laughs> Fuck these people. I mean, it takes some courage uh, because uh, to be able to try and, and follow your own voice. <laughs> Yeah, echoing those thoughts, you know, we, we all sort of have reasons to get up in the morning and go to the studio and have to find those reasons. And for me, I just feel compelled to make things. I, I, there's, it's hard to articulate, but I've always f f had that, that urge and instinct. And it just, it's part of what we do as artists. I mean, if you're not feeling like you have to do it, then you're probably not an artist is what I think, you know. Um, and especially in light of sort of the climate, the political and cultural climate that we live in now where money is really precedes really the value for most, um, you know, being an artist is, is taking a leap into, you know, faith, having faith and, and taking a leap. And it, you, again, you have to be co courageous. And it feels like we've been, ha we had this conversation when I was in art school 20 years ago about closing art schools and art is dead and what the hell are you thinking about? You know, when I decided to, be, to study art, my grandfather was footing the bill and I had to have that conversation, you know, with him. And, you know, and he, you know, he was a he was an accountant. <laughs> so ma imagine that conversation, you know? And so, you know, I had, to, I had to cut a deal with him. I had to study design simultaneously with studio art. And, you know, luckily it sort of worked out for me. And it's just a matter of, um, you know, trusting that, you know, it, I'm sure all of you during your course, the, people have told you, what, you're going to, you're going to be an artist. You're going to do what? And you know what? You're going to apply to 
to Yale? What are you thinking? You know, and you just, you just do it. You just do it because you have this feeling that it's going to work out. And it usually does. It's amazing. Also, art, art is, I think, the, the last front, one of the last frontiers of freedom of speech. And it, it really is a right. I mean, why not? Well, first I'll preface this by saying that I was a student here in 70. I got my MA, and my parents cut me off when I became an art major. Mm -hmm. And Marianne and Jim Melcher invited all their students over once, like probably for dinner. But that made so, that was so wonderful to know that somebody you respected thought what you were doing was significant. But anyway, years have gone by, I no longer live here. But I'm wondering, with all the loneliness that we all feel when we make this decision, which is against the grain of our society, how much has the Bay Area community mattered to you? And do you think it's specific to this art community, different from others, or whatever you have to say? Uh, it's different, but the art world is really small. It's very small. So, and with technology, you can be face on Facebook or Skyping someone or be somewhere else in just a few minutes. But I think what's good about living in the San Francisco Bay Area, it's just, people are just a minute away. All right, it's a small community, it's not very big. Yeah, it, well, it, it's it's good. Yeah, I mean, we we we've I've built a cadre of friends who I've known most of my life, and it's just it's easy. We have good weather. We have good food. <laughs> yeah, all those things. <laughs> Beautiful landscape. You can be in the city one moment, at the beach in another moment, in the desert, in the mountains, it's all there. And, and, and I think it's also the diversity of the Bay Area that contributes to how interesting this place is. I mean, we've been the beginning of so many movements and all of that helps to feed the soul. <clears throat> I'm very lucky because uh, I have some friends, but now, by now, 20 years, I've got a lot of friends in the community. So I think it's, uh, you have to maybe create your own vehicle for support sometimes. If you're an individual artist, studio artist, work painter, whatever, you might have to go out and try and get together a few People, and I, you, you can, you know, a little creativity doesn't have to be limited to the canvas. Mm -hmm. You can be creative about your life, and I mean, we do need, we we need support from some friends for sure. You know. uh, just real quick, I think you know, coming up in growing up in this area, and also coming up as an artist in this area, I think it's unique in that. Um, at least when I was coming up, there was seemed to be a certain, you know, the creative vision wasn't just with the artists, it was with the gallerists and the, you know, the Southern exposures and the Cap Streets and, you know, all these opportunities to get involved. And I think that's, you know, the, the spirit of Bay Area is people get involved with their art communities much more than, you know, I lived in New York. It's a different kind of get involved, you know, you go to an opening in New York and you're sort of rubbing elbows with you know, Wall Street, people in suits and stuff, and you get a little bit of that here too, but there's more artists per capita, I think, here that are, you know, than anywhere, <laughs> you know? And, 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 it's, and in that way, it's a beautiful thing, I think. You know, you're, you're gonna find support. You can throw a quarter and you'll hit an artist somewhere in this area, <laughs> so. And, and, you know, that's why we're here, I think. And we've reached the point here in our day where we have to thank our morning panelists who've been so generous, Mildred, Richard, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.